Oh man, I love it. Flat, calm conditions, sunny, and they're very, very spooky. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a big fish right there. There's another one with it. Wow, there's one bigger with it. Oh Check yeah. Oh my gosh, that one's huge with it. Oh, come on, come here. Oh yeah, that's fun right there. This is one of my favorite ways to catch them, especially when the conditions are this calm. Just launched the boat here. Haven't even cranked up my big motor. I put the swim baits away, I put the jerk baits, spinner baits, all my reaction baits, put them away, and just rigged up a Neko rig here on a spinning rod, eight pound test line, and that is one deadly way to catch them. Whenever the fish are shallow, spooky, clear water, flat, calm water, I think it's gonna be a good day. So we're here fishing a Neko rig today. I don't think you need much else. And growing up in uh, you know the Western United States, um, I've been throwing this Neko rig or nail weighted wacky, however you, you want to say it. You know, it's just a it's a technique that presents a soft plastic bait so naturally the fish just can't resist, especially in that clear water. And today I'm using like a cross style worm. Um, everyone knows a straight tailed worm like a Senko works. Neko rigging in this, these clear water, rocky lakes like this. But I like a little cross style. Um, I, this is a little bottle shrimp, and I call this like a, a, the, the craw version of a Senko. It's got straight tail, straight arms to it, and every time you shake it, those arms just wave. And when you wacky rig it with a little O-ring around its waist, a tungsten nail in its tail, it always stays straight up. And every time you shake, 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 those arms wave, and it kind of falls down those rocks perfectly in the most natural manner. Texas rig can't achieve that, Carolina rig can't achieve that, a jig head can't achieve that. The only way to achieve that action in a bottle shrimp like this is by Neko rigging it. So it's ultra, ultra deadly when fish are pressured or when it's flat, calm, in high pressure situations here. So one of the biggest things to keep in mind when you're fishing any uh, open hook style bait like this Neko rig is it is so important to not set the hook when one bites it. As you can see here, I'm just shaking along the bottom. I know the tail of that crawl is in the bottom. The arms are moving across. I'm just shaking, shaking the slack, shaking the slack. When I feel a bite and that slack just goes straight, doink, and you feel that bite, it is so important not to wind down and give it that jig, uh, you know, that jig hook set. Super important to when you feel that bite, just start reeling and let the rod, the braided line, and that fluorocarbon leader do all the work. Just keep that hook point coming towards you, real, 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 real. That soft rod will load up, and that's a caught fish every single time. As long as you have no obstacles around, that is a landed fish every single time. So keep that in mind. That's very, very important, is real setting on any open hooked top style bait. There's a big one, dude. That's a big one. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's a freaking big one. Doinked it, dude. Oh my gosh, that's a giant. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh my gosh. There's freaking sticks everywhere. Oh, come look at this fish jump. Oh my God, that's a giant. Oh, look at my bottle shrimp traveling up the line. Just right there. Look at that. Pound. Come here. Come here. Oh my gosh. Oh. Look at that one, Michi. That's why you throw that Neko rig craw right there. <laughs> we were coming up on this cove. It's a flat, 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 and I noticed just a rocky point. That is why we throw that rig right there. It's ultra natural. Shake it on slack line when you feel that, that little pop, that little tick. Real set it and it's game on. Whoo! Eight pound test leader, 15 pound test braid, 
six foot eight spinning rod and an eight plus pounder. Neko rig crawl, man. No one else out here does it. It gets bites just like that. Flat, calm, sunny conditions. The only presentation in my mind is a finesse Neko rig just like that. And that paid off. I don't think she would have been a jig, a swim bait, a jerk bait, any of that stuff. But that nice finesse presentation, super natural, natural colors, nail weighted, wacky baby. That is awesome. All right, so let me sit down and show you guys um, how to rig a, a, a Neko rigged craw. Um, it starts out with a just a wacky rigged hook here. Um, this is a Trocar weedless hook. It's got the Pro V bend in it, which I really like. This hook bend here has got this nice V shape to it, and it does a really good job at keeping the O-ring, that wacky rigged O-ring, right where it needs to be, right in the bend of the hook. It doesn't come up to the, to the barb, doesn't go down to the line tie. It stays exactly where it needs to be right there. So starts out with a, a size two. Um, wacky rigged hook here, let me just tie this on. I actually have uh, a weed guard on this one here. It just kind of looks like a, uh, they almost look like crawl antennas here, so it kind of matches everything. But uh, that's the wacky rigged hook there. And then um, just real simple, um, you know, uh, uh, everyone knows what this is. This is just a wacky rigger, wacky rig tool. So that's what I use here. And this here is just a, a, a Numa Ebby, which is a green pumpkin bottle shrimp. And again, the beauty of this bait here is that when you when you shake it along the bottom, these two arms, they don't curl and twist and put off a vibration until you really shake that worm. You shake the craw and there's so much weight in these, these arms here that just moves a lot of water underwater and it really puts, puts off that same vibe as a Senko or as a straight tailed, you know, salt, high salt content worm. So. With that there, you know, I just grab a uh, just grab a, a crawl like this, get my wacky rigging tool, uh, and just put the O-ring right around its, its belly there, right around its waist, right in the skinny spot there. Um, as you can see, right here, just right in the skinny spot. And then I'll just go ahead and grab me a 16th ounce tungsten weight. This is a just a little Eagle Claw Pagoda weight. Uh, it's got the nice little, uh, you know, ribs on there just to, to keep it inside the worm, but it's real simple. Um, you know, again, we've all seen wacky Neko rigs with, uh, you know, the nail weight in the, in the head of the worm. We're putting the weight in the tail of the craw here, which forces it down. It's a natural presentation, forces it down. And then the hook, uh, we just go ahead and grab that wacky rigged hook. It's always important to keep that hook point up opposite of where that tungsten nail weight is. So we'll just go ahead and rig this up. It's just straight through the O-ring there. And there we go. There is a rigged Neko crawl right there. And it's just a different look. You know, when you're dealing with high pressure situations, everyone's throwing a wacky rig or whatever it is. This is just a nice different look. Again, in every shake to that rod tip, you're just putting off that vibration down there and it looks super, super natural. So. That's it right there, a Neko rigged craw. Choose your natural colors. Match your colors to the color of the water. Today we have visibility seven, eight feet of water. So I'm going with Numa Ebby, which is just a green pumpkin. Your green pumpkin blues, your browns, your purples in the um, kind of clear water. And then in your stained water, go with your June bugs, your black and blues. Don't stray away from that. But again, it's really the vibration that gets the bites with this Neko rig craw. Oh my God, he's gonna eat it again. He's gonna eat it again. Oh my gosh. God, he ate it again. He ate it again. Dude, I just hooked this fish in that dock. I pulled it out and it came off. Oh yeah, dude, that is awesome. That was insane. Oh, oh that was so freaking cool, man. I made a long cast of that dock. It fell down, fell down, fell down. And I, I felt my line go slack. It was swimming towards me. So I real set, real set, real set. Got a piece of it. I watched it come out and go Poof, And it came off and I just killed it. And that's the beauty of a Neko rig. It falls so naturally right back down. I watched it turn around after being hooked and ate it up again. Like it's gone.
ate it twice. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Love it, man. When it's this calm and this sunny, you have to throw something super, super natural, and that is exactly what this is. All right, as far as what to look for while throwing a Neko rig, um, really from January to December, one of my favorite types of banks or cover or structure to fish with a Neko rig is gonna be a long point with a drop off or an underwater ledge or an underwater bluff like I have here. If you look at this bank, there's a bluff that extends out and it ends right here. So it's essentially a point with a really steep drop on it. Now that steep drop is gonna vary uh, from lake to lake. Let's say you're fishing a small pond or a reservoir just any type of drop where you could throw the Neko rig shallow and then just kind of shake it along and let it fall naturally and stair step down that drop. So that works pretty much year round. And then just look for that real obvious point that sticks out or that dock that sticks out or that tree that sticks out um, in that cove. And that's where you throw that Neko rig and get some really good bites. And that Neko rig just stays along the bottom and stair steps real nice and naturally and it drives big fish nuts. I'll tell you, and really the beauty of a Neko rig versus like a Texas rig or a shaky head, um, because of where the hook meets with the bait and because of that weight is offset of that hook, um, you can really skip these things way up underneath docks, underneath laydowns, any little obstacle, you could really skip them well. They just don't get hung up like a Texas rig as you go to skip things. So. Again, when it's flat, calm, and sunny like this, you want to be as stealthy as possible. We're using an eight pound test line, um, a 15 pound braided line, and a six foot eight rod. I like a six foot eight rod um, for accuracy only. And uh, this is just a four power rod here. This is a Rochi Double X Ronin. And uh, with a short butt, I could be real accurate up underneath these docks, these overhangs, these walkways. And you can really put that Neko rig where it needs to be to get a bite. There's one. No, 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 don't go in there. No, 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 no. Oh, it's a big fish. Eight pound test, a lot of trees. Oh, no, come here. Oh, that's a nice fish. Come here, come here, fish. That one wasn't in the dock. That one was underneath the walkway. Skipped it up under there. Come here, yeah. Another big one on the Neko. Oh, that is awesome. How about that one, Michi? Oh my goodness. And see how that just slides up the line like that? I mean, you could catch a dozen of those fish just like that on one bait. Nice, five pounder. Another nice one. Let's let her go. All right. That was an awesome day on the water. You know, on the way back home here, um, I had one more tip to give you guys. Um, I'm probably gonna go back out fishing tomorrow. The fishing was that good. Um, one final tip is, you know, before you even get on the water, you could pre-rig these Neko bottle shrimps like this. So wh whether you're on a red hot, you know, worm bite or a Neko rig bite, whatever it is, uh, pre-rigging your, um, your baits uh, just kind of saves time on the water. You have them ready to go. That way, you know, when you go from spot to spot, all you have to do is pull out these pre-rigged bottle shrimps and just thread it right on your hook and you're able to go cast and cast and cast. So I just rigged up four more. I'm ready to hit the water again tomorrow. Hopefully you guys learned a lot from that video and uh, hopefully it gives you a little more confidence in alternate rigging a bottle shrimp bait.